All right, ladies and gentlemen, you are on page 10. 3.3, discover exponent laws. So you know what an exponent is, you know what a power is, right? We have, uh, for example, in the first one, we have three to the power of two. We've got our base and we've got our exponent. And that means we have a repeated factor of three and we have it two times, it repeats two times. The factor that gets repeated is the base and the number of times it's repeated is the exponent, and if we wanted to write that in standard form, we just have 3 times 3 equals 9. Now, there are a lot of rules that help us when we're dealing with exponents so that we don't have to write these long multiplication sentences. We can just use the rule. But in order to use the rule, you need to know how the rule works and why it works. So we're going to break those down today. In the very first one, I'll do that one with you. You have in your first uh, box there, 3 to the power of 2 times 3 to the power of 4. And we need to write it in expanded form. What that means is simply that, remember, 3 squared is 3 times 3. And then we're going to multiply it by 3 to the power of 4, which is just 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. We want to double check that we're on the right track. We need to have 3 squared, which is 2 factors of 3, and 3 to the power of 4, which is 4 factors of 3. That is expanded form. But now once we have it written like this, did it really make any difference that we had 3 squared times 3 to the power of 4? Are they still separated by anything special? No, they're just all connected by a string of multiplication. We could put brackets here. It would make no difference whatsoever. It's still just 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So now writing it as a single power, how many factors of 3 do we have here? Six. We simply have 6 factors of 3. 3 to the power of 6. I'll do one more with you, then I'll leave you on your own. You've got 4 to the power of 3 times 4 to the power of 3. So we have four fact sorry, three factors of four times another three factors of four. How many factors of four do we have? Four to the power of six. Go ahead and fill out the rest of the chart. When you get down to the end, you get to make a conjecture, which is a statement that seems to be true, uh, based on what you've learned. So it says explain the relationship between each quotient, so between what you see in the first column and what you see in the last column and try to say how you think that they're connected. How are the exponents connected? There's a hint for you. Okay, your chart should look a little bit like this, and you should have been able to make some kind of relationship between uh, the base and exponent of the first column and the last column. We noted that the base doesn't change, but the exponent does. It becomes the sum of the two exponents here. Four plus one is five, and that rang true in all of our examples 4 to the power of 3, 4 to the power of 3, the base is still 4, the new exponent is 6, 3 plus 3 is 6. And that was the same using our variable, no matter what number you use in the whole world, k to the power of 3, k to the power of 8, that's k to the power of 11, we just add our exponents. And we'll write an official rule for it in our next section of notes. But go ahead and look down at your next box, investigation B. <coughs> this is talking about the quotient of powers. And we have the exact same little chart going on. This one's going to take up a little bit more space, because this time we're dividing. So our first example is 5 to the power of 5 divided by 5 to the power of 3. And in expanded form, that's going to look like this. In our numerator, we have 5 factors of 5. 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. And then in our denominator, we have three factors of five. Ooh. Now, whenever we have a factor in the numerator and a factor in the denominator that are exactly the same, what can happen to them? Cancel each other out. We can cancel them out because you're not really canceling anything out. We just say it that way. But five over five is one. 1 over 1. 
So this guy reduces to 1, and that reduces to 1. 5 over 5 is 1, and 5 over 5 is 1. So in the denominator now, all we have left is 1. And in the numerator, we still have 5 times 5. Well, can we express that as a single power? It's just 5 to the power of 2. We have two factors of 5 left over. We'll do one more with you. We've got 7. How do we have 2 more 5? So in the numerator, we have 5 times 5 over... 1 means nothing, basically? Uh, it means everything. It means 1s. So you have 5 times 5, 1s. So you have 5 times 5, which is 25. 5 squared. Yeah. So our second example, we have 7 to the power of 4 divided by 7 to the power of 1. So again, in our numerator, we're going to have seven fac sorry, four factors of 7. It's really hard to say that the right way. And in the denominator, we have one factor of 7. And it's 7 and 1, right? How many, seven. how many factors of 7 do we have left in the numerator? We have 7 to the power of 3. Go ahead and fill out the rest of your chart. Again, in the last blank box, you can make up your own. And then also make a conjecture about what's happening here. Make a connection between the base of the first column and the base of the last column, as well as the exponent. What's happening to the exponent of the first columns in relation to the last column? OK, somebody um, share the connection that they found. Go for it, Jenna. Um, so the subtract, like if you subtract Nice. Did our base change? No. Nope. The base doesn't change. You're dealing with P and P, and you're ending with P. But to get that new exponent, we just take our exponent, subtract our next one. 8 minus 5 is 3. Okay. This is going to lead us to the quotient law of working with pattern, uh, working with powers. I'm going to clear this off. At the top of your next page, you have space for a few notes, which is what we're going to do now. Uh, this activity, this activity illustrates two exponent laws. A law in science or math is something that is always true. You can count on it forever and ever and ever, no matter what the situation. So when we were dealing with numbers, it worked. And when we were dealing with a base that was a variable, it worked. Uh, if you were dealing with a, an exponent that was a variable, it would still work. Okay, You would just rewrite it uh, using the law. Exponent laws, exponent laws allow us to simplify expressions involving powers with the same base. powers with the same base. And just kind of underline that. That's a key point. Somebody asked, well, we did the last activity. Would this work if it was something like, don't write this, but if it was 3 to the power of 4 divided by, uh, let's say, 2 to the power of 3, could we still use our exponent laws? No. You have to use the same base. If we were going to make this into a single power, what base would we use? 3 or 2? Well, you can't do that because this is factors of 3. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. And this is factors of 2. 2 times 2 times 2. Very different. Sometimes you can rearrange them so that you are expressing the same value as a power with the same base. So like if you get a 6, like if you both get um, you know, the base is uh, equal 6, would that work? Uh, well, let's do it this way. Let's say this is, um, no, it won't work that way. Let's say this was something 4 to the power of 4, and this was 2 to the power of something. It's possible that you could get, you could express this, well, it, 
let's say this was 2 to the power of 6, I can express 2 to the power of 6 as a power of 4. Could you do like 4 so to for the power instance, of 5? Yeah, yeah, 2 times 2. 2 to the power of 2 times 3. You don't know this rule yet, mm -hmm. but 4 to the power of 3 is the same as 2 to the power of 6. Okay? So, you, do so you could do it that way. But, but don't you just use bed mass? We're jumping ahead. Let's not do that. Exponent laws allow you to simplify expressions involving powers with the same base. The two laws that we learned about just now, number one is called the product law. The product law of exponents. And it says, when multiplying, so the product always dealing with multiplying, right? So this one is when multiplying powers. What has to be true about the powers again? With the same base. So you have two powers, and they have the same base. Add the exponents to write as a single power. Now I'm going to give you the standard form of what that looks like. So let's say, and it's all variables, don't get confused, you could sub in numbers too, I'll do one example with numbers after. Let's say we have the base x, and it's raised to the power a. And we're going to multiply it by another power. What's the base of that next power going to be? It's going to be x. And the exponent can be anything at all. So b means anything at all. The answer to this, using the product rule, we're still going to have the exponent x. And all we have to do is add Sorry, we're still going to have the base x, and we're just going to add our exponents a plus b. Can we have a c? Okay. No, c would not necessarily be a plus b. But it could. If it was a plus b, then yeah, it would be a plus b. Just write a plus b, and I'll give you an example using numbers. Example using numbers would be 2 to the power of 3 times 2 to the power of 5. They have the same base. All we'd have to do is rewrite it as 2 to the power of 3 plus 5, which we know because they're numbers, that we can say it's 2 to the power of 8. Okay, product law. The second law that we dealt with was called, is called, the quotient law. Quotient, always dealing with division. So when dividing powers with the same base, subtract, subtract the exponents to write as a single power. So we're going to use variables again. We've got a base of x and an exponent of a. And we're dividing by another power that has a base of x and an exponent b. And in order to find the answer, all we need to do is take that same base and raise it to the power of a minus b. What if it's um, x to the power of a divided by x to the power of a? You just can't see each other out, would it just be x? You could still use the exact same rule, yep, you well, no, uh, that's a different rule. Uh, sure, I'll briefly explain that because you asked and it's a really good question. So, don't write this, but let's say you had x to the power of a divided by x to the power of a, you would rewrite it the exact same way using the quotient law. You'd have x to the power of a minus a. Well, what's a minus a? Zero. zero. x to the power of zero? You have to write x to the power of zero. Anything to the power of zero equals one. No matter what x is, this is going to be one. I think we showed you that last week, why all of them are one, but we don't need to get into it right now. I'll just give you one example using numbers to go with this quotient law. 
let's say you had 3 to the power of 4 divided by 3 to the power of 2. All you need to do is 3 to the power of 4 minus 2, which equals 3 to the power of 2, which you know is 9. Example 1, write each product as a single power, then evaluate each power. So we're applying the product rule over and over and over again. So here we have a 3 squared times 3 to the power of 3. Can we write that as a single power? Yes. yes. No. Yes. What is it? Yes. It's yes. just like it yep. We just right. add five, these guys. Five, five, five. Yeah, we got 2 plus 3, Are you what which equals 3 to the power of 5. And if we're going to get that answer in our calculator, we would just go 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Times three. Or you can use your uh, exponent button on your calculator, 3 to the power of 5. So you should all have your calculators out so you can do this quickly. 243. 243. Excellent. B. B says 5 times, sorry, 5 squared times 5 times 5 squared. Again, we just take our same base and we're going to add up all our exponents. 2 plus 1 plus 2. Now the difficult part here was remembering that 5, one factor of 5, that's got an invisible exponent of 1 here. Okay, So we're going to add that 2 plus 1 plus 2. That's going to give us 5 to the power of 5. And who's got their calculator out? That is 3,125. C is getting us into using negative exponents. Great. Sorry, negative base. Negative 2 to the power of 4 times negative 2 to the power of 3. And we're just going to apply our exact same rules. So this is where in math, you, there's no need to panic. Keep the base, negative 2, and add the exponents, 4 plus 3. So we've got negative 2 to the power of 7. Now, keep in mind, the negative is attached to the 2 inside the bracket in this example. So it also is going to get multiplied by itself 7 times. So how many negative factors do we have? 7. 7, seven which is an odd number, so our answer is going to be negative. In your calculator, you can just put 2 to the power of 7, which gets you negative 128. D. In D, we're dealing with a fraction. One half to the power of three times one half to the power of two. Again, no need to panic. Do it the exact same way. That's one half to the power of three plus two, which is one half to the power of five. Now, remember how we do... Uh, so in your calculator, you could punch it in like this, 0 0.5 to the power of 5. Okay, that would work. But you can also think about it algebraically. All We're going to leave it in fraction form. So a decimal answer is not going to be sufficient here. Remember, to put this in expanded form is just top times top, 5 times, and bottom times bottom, 5 times. So our numerator has 5 factors of 1 which is just 1. And our denominator has 5 factors of 2. Please make sure you're writing this and keeping up. So now all of a sudden, we have something like this. We have 1 over 2 to the power of 5. In the denominator, there's 5 factors of 2. And that's 32, so we have 1 over 32. Okay? So 1 half to the power of 5 is 1 32nd, or 1 over 32. E uses decimals, but again, it's the same base. So we've got E is 0 0.1 to the power of 4 times 0 0.1 to the power of 2. Hopefully you're able to work faster than me at this point. That's, we're just going to add our exponents. We've got 0 0.1 to the power of 6. And because 0.1 is a power of 10, um, we know how to move this. We're really just going to move the decimal six places. So this ends up being 0 
zero, 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 one. So a group of three zeros and then two zeros and a one. All right, the next set of examples has us applying the quotient rule, which was dealing with when you're dealing with division of the same powers. And we have to write each product as a single power. So A is 8 to the power of 7 divided by 8 to the power of 5. We can rewrite that using our quotient rule. It says just to keep the same base, subtract the exponents. And that's 8 to the power of 2. To evaluate that, that's 64. 8 Wait, squared, right? 8 times 8. Because now it's division, we're working on the quotient rule. Okay, multiplication, we add the exponents. Division, we subtract the exponents. And if you need a refresher for that, just go back to the investigation that we did at the bottom. This is eight fac seven factors of eight divided by five factors of eight. So in the numerator, you've got eight times eight, seven times. In the denominator, you've got eight times eight, five times. They cancel out enough that all that's left in the numerator is eight times eight, which is 64. B says four to the power of seven divided by four divided by four to the power of three. Okay, now in this one, we just divide in order from left to right. So we're gonna do this in two steps. We're gonna take just the first set and we're gonna say that's four to the power of seven minus one. And then we're still gonna divide by four to the power of three, okay? So here we've got four to the power of six divided by four to the power of three. Then we're gonna apply the same rule again. That's four to the power of six minus three which is four to the power of three, which is four times four times four, that's 64. C, C is, looks really scary. It's a negative decimal. So you've got negative 0.5 to the power of six, and it's written in fraction form, negative 0 0.5 to the power of three. Now to rewrite this, nothing crazy has to happen. It's still just division using the same base, so we're gonna rewrite our base, and our exponent is six minus three. That zero, negative 0 0.5 to the power of three, which is negative 0 0.125. The last example we're still going to do is D. And in D, you have a, a big mess, really. It's 3 fourths to the power of 3 times, so we've got our product rule in here, 3 fourths to the power of 2, and that is being divided by 3 fourths to the power of 5. So we're going to work to the top first, right? We're going to simplify our numerator first. We're given 3 over 4. And since it's the product rule, right, multiplication, we're going to add our exponents, 3 plus 2. And denominator is just going to stay the same for now. And I'm going to write two steps in one here. Wait, why are we adding? I'm because in the numerator it's multiplication. Product so product law. So we're going to end up with 3 fourths to the power of 5 over 3 fourths to the power of 5. So we're going to have 3 fourths to the power of 5 minus 5. Uh, I'm going to work across here because I'm out of room because now we're applying the quotient law. So we're subtracting our exponents. That's going to give us 3 over 4 to the power of 0. And anything to the power of 0 is 1. Are we dismissed? Okay, the third of our investigations dealing with discovering exponent laws has to do with power of powers. As you can see here, it's called that because we're taking the power of another power. So we've got 2 to the power of 2, and then that, whatever that is, to the power of 3. So we actually have a repeated factor of 2 to the power of 2. So when we write this in expanded form, we're going to deal with this exponent out here first with the base of 2 to the power of 2. So we have 2 to the power of 2 times 2 to the power of 2 
times 2 to the power of 2. Now in the next line, within that 2 to the power of 2, we can expand each of these powers as well. This is a base of 2, an exponent of 2. So we have two factors of 2. That's going to give us 2 times 2, times 2 times 2, times 2 times 2. Now as we're thinking through this, these brackets really don't need to be here because all of these factors of 2 are connected by multiplication. So it's really just 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which gives us in our single power column, single power gives us 6 factors of 2, or 2 to the power of 6. The next example that we have is 5 to the power of 3 to the power of 4. Again, a power of powers. So we have a base of 5 to the power of 3 raised to the power of 4. So we have 4 factors of 5 to the power of 3, and this time I'll write it without the brackets. And if we were to expand that, it takes up a bit of space, but we're going to do it. This is 5 factors of 3. 5 times 5 times 5. This is 5 factors of 3, connected by multiplication. So another 5 times 5 times 5. Another one, 5 times 5 times 5. And our last set of 3 factors of 5. 5 times 5 times 5. And to write that as a single base, all we would have to do is count up our factors of 5. Okay? We have a base of 5. And how many factors of 5 did we get? Should have gotten 12 factors of 5. Go ahead and try the last one on your own. It's going to be 10 to the power of 4 to the power, power of 2. And then in the last box, make up your own. Don't choose huge exponents, just get big and messy. Don't need that for an example, uh, but just go ahead and make up your own and then double check up here that you've done it correctly. And at the end you can make a conjecture about the relationship between each power of powers from the first column and the single power in the second column. Remember to relate the base of each column and the exponents of each column. Okay, after expanding the last example there, 10 to the power of 4 to the power of 2, should have been able to write two factors of 10 to the power of 4, and expand out each of those factors, having four factors of 10 here and four factors of 10 here, for a total of eight factors of 10, 10 to the power of 8. And you should have been able to make the connection between the exponents in the power of powers column and the exponent in the single power all we've done to get the power of 6 here is multiply 2 times 3. To get the power of 12, 3 times 4. To get the power of 8, 4 times 2. So the power of powers law is as follows. A power of powers can be written as a single power by multiplying the exponents and multiplying the exponents and we can give the general form for that law if we have a power, let's say x to the power of a, and we take that power and we raise the whole thing to the power of b, then we keep the same base and we multiply our exponents. Another way of writing a times b is just ab. x to the power of a to the power of b is the same as x to the power of a times b where we multiply a and b together and then calculate the power. All right, let's apply the power of power law in some examples. 
you're going to have four examples here. The first one is pretty straightforward. We're going to take 3 to the power of 2 and raise that to the power of 4. So if we write that out, expand it a little bit using our law, we don't have to write the whole expanded form anymore because we've already discovered that that's equivalent to 3 to the power of, and then in the exponent, 2 times 4, which gives us 3 to the power of 8. And we're asked to evaluate. Again, we would do this on our calculator. We would just hit 3, and then you might have a y to the power of x button, and then you would hit 8, and then you would hit equals, and you'd get your answer. You might not have a y to the power of x button, you might have a caret. That will do the same thing. The final answer here is 6,561. B is, copy this down carefully, we've got a square bracket, and then inside the rounded bracket, we have negative 2, close bracket, raise that to the power of 3, and then raise that to the power of 4. So you can see that here we really have a base of negative 2 to the power of 3 is being raised to the power of 4. Or we can apply our power of power laws, and we can see that our base is negative 2. We'll leave that in brackets because we want to keep the negative attached to the 2 as it is in the problem. And now we can multiply our exponents together. So we're given negative 2, still in brackets, to the power of 12. And this you could probably do in your head or on your fingers, but we could also just punch it into the calculator a little more quickly. We also need to realize that we're going to be left with an even number of positive factors. So this negative sign is going to cancel itself out over and over and over again, and you're going to be left with a positive final answer. It's going to be positive 4,096. C. C, I'm actually going to move over here. I need a little bit more space. Again, copy this one down carefully. We have a tall square bracket and a tall rounded bracket because we're dealing with a fraction. So we have two thirds to the power of two. We're going to take that whole thing and raise it to the power of two. Well, it looks tricky, but the strategy is just the same. Our base is two over three. The exponent is two times two. And that reduces, let's make sure we have this in brackets. 2 over 3 to the power of 4. We remember that that means that the numerator is raised to the power of 4 and the denominator is raised to the power of 4. So we have 2 to the power of 4 over 3 to the power of 4. And you could put that in your calculator or you could uh, write all the repeated factors. I've just put 2 to the power of 4 in my calculator for 16 in the numerator. 3 to the power of 4 in my calculator for a denominator of 81. This cannot be reduced. That is a final answer. And I apologize if this is a bit messy, but we're going to do D back over on this side uh, because it doesn't take up as much space. The base is a decimal, 0 0.2. We're going to raise it to the power of 3. should still be inside that bracket. Sorry about that. And then we'll raise that whole thing to the power of 2. This is going to be a base of 0 0.2. And then our exponents are just going to multiply together, which gives us 0 0.2 to the power of 6, which in your calculator will come out as 0 0.0000064. Be careful when you're recording those answers. Uh, you don't want to lose a decimal place anywhere. Take a look through each of the four examples we just did, applying the power of powers law, and see if you uh, can kind of be confident that you know what you're doing, that you could apply this on your own during your practice problems. Example four gives us some more complicated things. We're going to have algebraic expressions that also apply the power laws 
Uh, remember, algebra is the same as arithmetic, except it has variables in it, but it still uses addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and exponents. So here we go. In A, we're given y to the power of 3 times y to the power of 5. Now think which product rule sorry, which exponent law am I going to be using? And you should have come up with the product rule, which tells us that if we're multiplying two powers with the same base, we can just keep the base and add the exponents. It's going to give us a final answer of y to the power of 8. Now this is sufficiently simplified. You don't know what y is, so you can't calculate anything here or evaluate but you can simplify. B is 6p to the power of 7 divided by 3p to the power of 3. Now, it's written in this way. You could, if you wanted to, to put it in fraction form, it would work the exact same if you did 6p over 7, sorry, 6p to the power of 7 over 3p to the power of 3. But all we need to know is that we're going to divide our numeric terms and then apply the quotient rule for exponents with the same base. Okay? So 6 divided by 3 is 2. And then we're left with p to the power of 7 minus 3, which is 2p to the power of 4. And that's as reduced as we can make this example in b. Moving on to C. Again, we're just adding, uh, we're just testing out our skills in slightly more difficult problems each time. C gives us a string of variables with exponents. We have a squared, b cubed, and since there's nothing in between there, we know that this is multiplication. You have a times a times b times b times b. It's right here. And we're multiplying that by more of the same factors. We've got a to the power of 6, b to the power of 4. So don't let this trick you. They don't necessarily need to separate this by a multiplication sign. And all of these are equally factors of the same sentence. If we expanded this whole thing, we'd get two factors of a here, three factors of b here, six factors of a here, four factors of b here, and we could rearrange them any which way we wanted put all the a's beside each other, all the b's beside each other, and then add them up. But using our new exponent laws, we don't need to do that. We can apply uh, to powers with the same bases, which means the a's are going to work together and the b's are going to work together. So first let's talk about the powers of a. We have 6 plus 2, or 2 plus 6. So we have 8 factors of a. And how many factors of b do we have? 3 plus 4, 7 factors of b. Example d is a bit long. I'm going to start it here. We'll do our first one across and then work down. So we're given negative 2 times u times v to the power of 3 times 8 u squared v squared all over in brackets 4 u v squared and that bracket closed to the power of 2. Now we're going to think about the numerator and denominator at first separately and then we'll see if we can combine them. But you can see in the numerator that all of these factors are simply attached by multiplication. So thinking numeric values, we have negative 2 times 8, or maybe let's rewrite all of it first. We've got, and I'll group my numeric terms, we've got negative 2 times 8 times u, and over here we have times u squared. And then that, dancing back here, we've got v cubed times v squared. That's our whole numerator kind of stretched out and grouped. We've grouped our numeric terms, we've grouped our 
u variable and we've grouped our v variable. We'll leave it like that for now and move down to the denominator. Now what's important to note in the denominator is that this exponent of 2 outside the bracket applies to every piece inside the bracket. So every factor in the bracket is going to be squared. So let's see what that would look like. 4 gets squared, the u gets squared, and the v squared gets squared. Let's go ahead and simplify the numerator and simplify the denominator. Our numeric term in the numerator, we have negative 2 times 8, that's negative 16. And then we have one factor of u here and two factors of u here. Remember, u with nothing there is kind of an invisible exponent of 1. So we actually have u to the power of 1 plus 2. I'm just going to write u to the power of 3. And how many factors of v do we have? Well, we have three factors here and two factors here. So that's five factors of v. And in our denominator, we'll simplify this as well. 4 squared is 16. u squared can just stay u squared and v to the power of 2 to the power of 2. Here we get to apply our power of powers law. Power of powers law. That's going to say that we multiply our exponents together as long as we have the same base. So we're going to be having v to the power of 2 times 2, which is v to the power of 4. From here, we can divide. Okay, We can divide our numerical terms negative 16 over 16 is negative 1. u to the power of 3 is 3 factors of u. u to the power of 2 is 2 factors of u. So these u's are actually going to cancel out 2 of these factors of u, leaving us with just 1 factor of u. And here we have 5 factors of v being divided by 4 factors of v. That's going to leave us with 1 factor of v. Final answer, we don't need to write this negative 1, but we do need to keep the negative sign. We have negative u v. I'm going to just quickly write that in another way, starting from this step, in case this was a bit too fast and tricky. So from this step, we can say, okay, I've got negative 16 divided by 16. That's easy. That's going to cancel out and just leave me with that negative sign. And now let's write it, uh, all the steps, applying the rules. So here we have the quotient law for powers, quotient law for exponents. We've got u to the power of 3 minus 2. And the same thing with our v's. We have v to the power of 5 minus 4. And that makes it a little bit easier to see how we ended up with u to the power of 1 times v to the power of 1. Just the same answer we got here just shows you that little in-between step that you can go. So in this lesson, we talked about multiplying powers with the same base. That was our product law for exponents. We talked about dividing powers with the same base. That was our quotient law for exponents. And we talked about finding the power of a power. And that was our power of power law for exponents. Your homework is your practice problems are found on page 23, numbers 1 through 50. Please come to class prepared to ask questions on anything you were stuck on, but also try to battle through uh, and apply all of these laws when simplifying your algebraic equations.